So this is the first tutorial for lesson five. Um, in this tutorial, what we'll do is we'll look at this supplemental relationship. Uh, again, what we're trying to do in the supplemental relationship is relate what could be multiple records of a certain thing, a certain, a certain sub subsubject we call it, to a major subject of our database. So the one I pointed out, uh, there were two that I pointed out in this diagram. You have a contact that could have multiple phone numbers, and I should say multiple phones. And in that, we would have a phone number, and we could have a type of a phone, and maybe something about whether or not it's active or inactive, or any notes about it. Uh, but those are things about the, that phone for, for, for uh, about each phone for a contact. Okay, same thing with contact links. A contact could have many different um, URLs or um, or links out on the internet uh, to different say social media sites or mail sites or whatever they want to do basically anything that they can link to on the internet maybe just web pages uh, but they may want to keep track of all those links. Again those links are for the particular contact. So we would say that the contact could have many phones, can have many links. That doesn't mean it has to have any, or it could just have one, but it could have up to many. And we say that's a one-to-many relationship, a firm one-to-many relationship, because it really doesn't make sense for the phone or the links, the phones or the link records to exist if the contact doesn't exist. So there's a firm relationship between the contact and its phones and the contact and its links. And to do that we can use what's called a supplemental relationship. We create what's called a supplemental relationship and there are uh, objects in the baseline objects library to build a supplemental table and a supplemental form that would go into the subject form for the contact. We'll see that in the third tutorial of, of this lecture. Um, but for right now, we just want to build the relationship and we'll do the one for contact phone. So a little bit about the relationship before I actually do the do the work. Okay, what's going on here? All right, we have a subject table. It's going to be called, con it's called contact. It's typical. It has a uh, primary key that's always aught star dash record identifier. It has a single field alternate key that's the contact's name. And that's important that we even mention that here because that will end up being the alias that we'll use in the uh, foreign key field in order to know which one this belongs to. Okay, which which records in, in the phone which records in the contact phone belong to a particular contact. We think of contact as being the sending table in a relationship, and that's true for all, almost all the relationships except for the uh, category relationship. The subject table tends to be the sending, uh, the sender of information to the other tables. Right? The sending primary key values, uh, our values are bound to the foreign key field. We'll talk about that when we actually go and work on the query uh, for its drop down and all. And then there's this, this uh, table that's called the supplemental table. And in this supplemental table, we'll have at least two fields. Be, uh, uh, let me step back here. We will always have an alternate key that is always like the alternate keys we've, I'm sorry, the primary key, which is always like the primary keys we've already seen. We'll also have those standard fields in most of the tables. Now, they don't ha have to be there in all of them, but they'll be there in most of them. And then we'll have Actually, I think they're there in all, not the more I think about it. Uh, when we get in there, we'll, we'll, we'll make note of that. Um, and then the interesting thing on a supplemental uh, table is that it always will have a two-field alternate key, one of which is the foreign key that bounds it to contact, and then another field that really distinguishes it. All right, so for in, the, in this instance, if I was to just go in, if I ignored the, the contact table and I had data in here and it was all set up in the relationship and I actually populated all that and I just looked at the data in here, what I would see is an identifier 
to say this record belongs to this contact and here's the phone number. That's what this field is right here. It's the phone number, the TXT contact star phone dash phone. That's the phone number. All right. Now, those are not the only two fields you you could have. You could have others. All right. In this case, we're going to put another field in here that basically categorizes the record within the contact table by saying the type of phone it is. And then we're also going to have a yes, no field and say whether or not that phone number is active. So you can have other fields, but you will always have in the alternate key two, two fields. And one will be the, uh, the record identifier that's being sent from the contact table, and the other will be uh, something that we call the supplement field. It's, a, it's basically a field that could, that could identify the record all by itself, really. Uh, it could, if we didn't have this one, it would serve as the primary, uh, as the alternate key. But since we have those together, we want them together, all right? So, let me close down that. And let's just build one. And I think a lot of this will become a lot more obvious after I build it. Uh, and, and, still got my work file up there sorry about that all right so now I'll tell you in this in these tutorials when I teach them in class I have to go quick okay and so I have done a lot of the work for you already in the tutorial file in the video I don't have to rush as much oh boy why is that happening I'm sorry, I get, I'm getting a message from another place and I have to take care of it. Okay. All right. I'm on two PCs at once and my other one was giving me a message that was about to reboot. I don't want that to happen. All right, so here we go. Um, again, there is a lot of things that are already done in this file. But I decided in the video, since I've got more time luxury, that I'm actually going to reproduce those. I'm going to do them again to show you what I did. So first off, take the work file, copy it into a file with your name, and then open it up. And as always, enable the content. Uh, before we get going, I've sent you an email earlier about re uh, packing and repairing your database. And I think a lot of you understood exactly where I was going, what, what that's about. If for some reason you ever got in trouble where you're getting error messages that you just don't think should be there, or if suddenly your file starts getting really big, you know, because you've been putting objects in, taking objects out, putting fields in, taking fields out, putting data in, taking data out, or anything like that, you could do what's called a compact or repair. And I'm just going to show that really quick. You could go up to File. You'll see this thing that says Compact and Repair. That's all you have to do. And usually that will take care of most of your problems. Uh, there's another way to get there through database tools. There's this Compact and Repair. It does exactly the same thing. All right. So what I want to do first is I want to create uh, a, a supplement table for the contacts phone. Now it's already in there. I had already built that for you. Uh, and how I did, I'm going to show you how I did that here and what I did in there, okay? Um, now, in order to do this again, I can't name it exactly the same thing, but I don't want to delete it because I've already put good data in here. If you look in here, you'll see there's data and you'll see the contact and the phone and blah, blah, blah. It's not in a relationship yet. I just put the data in, okay? We're going to have to establish the relationship still on this, okay? But I want to do it again for you uh, just so you can see how I did it. And the way I did it is I took this TLK receiver and start category and I did a copy and a paste and I changed the name to oops I'm sorry just use it to you. how I did that take two how I did that is I use this TSP file right here TSP subject supplement all right and I did a copy and a paste and then I named it appropriately and you could just say structure only because there really isn't any data in that object. There shouldn't be anyway. Um, the TSP and subject is the name of the subject table in the relationship. So contact. 
star means many, and then the supplement is phone. And of course, you would have a supplement field name phone then too. Now, if I say OK with this right now, why I'm getting so many notifications on my other PC all of a sudden. If I say, if I try to save this right now, it would say I already have one that exists, and that's true. So I'm just going to name this something slightly different, but you want it to be named TSP Contact Start iPhone. I'm just going to put in here new, just so I know the difference. Okay, and I'm going to say OK. Now, having done that, now I have the object here. I could open it up in Design View. I go in there and you'll see there's a lot of template type stuff in here. Um, in fact, right away, since the property sheet is open, I'm going to name this. I think this is actually a different step. The steps don't necessarily have to go in perfect order on these. So um, I'm just going to do it now since I'm looking at it. Contact. Phone. That's what I'll have this thing called in the database document. All right, and then I'm going to close the property sheet because I don't think I need it anymore for this one. Save it just to make sure I've got it saved. All right, again, as always, we make no change here on the uh, primary key. But you can see there's two fields here that have that look kind of template, and that's where we're going to have to make some things. So what I want to do here is this is the foreign key field. This is the field that will receive the value that's sent from the subject table. All right, and it's going to receive, obviously, the primary key value from the subject table. So I just want to go in here and replace subject with contact. And then I will make the description the same thing, contact. And this will always be a single pick field, and I've set it up to be a single pick field for you. So in fact, if I come down here and hit general, there is a... A couple things you need to set here first contact and then it's always is not null this field is always required or else the relationship cannot be established so in other words when you come in here and start typing a record in the sub form that's going to exist for this it will automatically make this binding for you and this field will automatically be set for you so you really shouldn't have to worry about it but still, I always like to build this field and say contact. You must select the contact. So we're pretty much done with that as far as setting up the, the look of the field. Now we're going to work on the lookup. And this is where you have to do a little bit of work. Again, though, it is a lot like the row sources that we set on a category relationship and on our um, uh, find record control in the subject form. So you've already had some exposure to this and the rules basically that we use for the find record form apply to this. Okay, So you're going to go in here and you're going to have this dummy link to that uh, uh, subject, uh, your subject table object from the ball. All right, You really don't want this. You want to substitute that with the, the correct subject table. And to do that you just go in and do show table and then contact. So now I've got the contact table in here. I could close this down. Don't delete subject just yet because you want to have these templates here. But we will do delete the subject table in a second. Okay. So I've got these templates, and you can see it already says the field record identifier in the first one, which is what we all, we always want that. All right. Uh, when we're doing a uh, a row source. But we want it from the contact table, not from the subject table. Hit this drop down and pick contact. Now, the alternate key field, what is that? All right. In contact, our alternate key field is txt contact name. So I want that to appear here. I could come here, hit the drop down, and you'll see that there's a fields, but they're right now they're bound to subject. That's because TBL subject is the source of the fields. So the first thing I really need to do is go and change that to contact and then go up to the top and hit its drop down again. And now you should see contact name, the alternate key field contact name. And then you do definitely want that ascending. All right. Now the last thing to do here 
is to go up here to subject. I just right clicked on that and I would do a remove table. And now everything is set. Hit the save button, hit this save button, not this save as button. Hit this save button up here in the right hand in the left hand corner. Hit that one. Okay, now you saved it and you can close it. If you want to run it first, just see what's what it does. You can see that. And what it's going to do is it's just going to come back with a the list of all the people in the uh, database sorted on their name in ascending order and the record identifier for them. All right, that's fine. Let's go back out here. And I want to just close this down now. And I have basically established then now what that foreign key can do. Now, I know when we did category relationships, another thing that we did is we selected the list edit form. There is no list edit form for this. And the reason for that is because the values really don't exist unless the contact list exists anyway. So it wouldn't sh you wouldn't be able to do anything with it. All right, you wouldn't be able to do do anything with it outside of using it with the contacts record. So we really don't need it here. Okay, and that's going to be true when we do junction relationships too. You won't need to have a lookup form basically here. All right. So the other thing we need to do now is go and put our supplement field together. And this is a you know a bit of typing, but not too much. And it tends to be the same stuff that we're used to doing. So contact and then the supplement. And we already named the supplement phone. So I could say phone. And then phone again. All right. And it is always a required field. And I'm going to put it in down here. And I'm going to put it on the validation text rule. And that's it. And I just set up my supplement field then. Now, I mentioned this is actually a phone number. If you really want to, you can put an input mask for a phone number on here. In fact, you might want to do that. Save your table first. Go in here. Find a phone number. Put it in there. Decide if you want to have the... Uh, optional on the prefix or not and you could do that here or you could do it after it's generated change this I'm just going wow it's not letting me do it anyway I'm going to do it again sorry about that I'm just going to generate it as it is and then change it afterwards okay and I'm underscore is good for the character after it so let's just go on here and say it's finished Right, so it's done, and I'm going to go back and change the 999 to 000 because I want to require a an area code. All right, and then that one should be done. And if I go in here right now and I click that and I go to form view for it, you'll see that I've got the contact in here. And if I go in here and look at that, I've got people listed, so that's working correctly. The phone comes up with the template that I need to type the phone number in. Now again, I don't have to have just those fields. I could have others. And so one of the other fields I want to make here is a type for this phone. So in other words, I look at that phone and I'll be able to know whether it's a landline or a cell phone or something else. Okay. So what I could do then is I could go and make just like I did be, uh, with the subject tables. I could go in and make, pull up the uh, uh, first off, I could create a category. Let me go in here. Copy the uh, TLK file and put a paste the TLK file. And I would call this now. Now, this is kind of interesting, okay? Remember, the receiver goes first. The receiver of this table is called Contact Star Phone. Now, actually, for me now, it's actually called con Contact Star Phone. Uh, and with new in the parentheses, but um, I don't. I could just. I'm just going to make a contact at star phone. Star phone. But I got another star. Okay, so one of the things I tend to do to isolate different parts of a relationship because I'm actually kind of building a a relationship with a relationship here now. Okay, I've got contact phone now, and that tells me that's the receiver, and now I can say what I want to call the, the category type. 
And I'm going to put new on here because this already exists in my database. I already built this one for you. All right. So we're just going to say OK. And so now I've got that one in here. And then it's going to be a little bit awkward because I've got that new on here. It's going to be, I'm going to have to do something in, in the uh, hooking up method that will have that new in there, but you wouldn't usually do that, okay? And you'll see that when you go in the contact phone, you'll see what, how it really is. But now all I would do is I would say uh, I want to have the uh, a single pick lookup. I'm going to copy that in. And by the way, that's the only one you have in here because that's the only one you really need. Uh, you never want this to be a multi-pick field, okay? Yeah, you, I'm not saying you can't have multi-picks in here. You can, okay? In fact, I probably should have put that in here if you want to do one uh, just for the sake of doing it. If you, if you want to do that, just copy over the multi-pick uh, lookup from something else. But right now, I just want to, I'm just going to do a single pick. And so, again, the receiver is contact star phone. And then the category is type. And I'll make, and here, you know, I would say type, but I think I'm going to actually say phone type. Here. Uh, and same thing here, I'll say phone type. Okay. And then, of course, my lookup. Now, do I want to make that required? I could. Um, if I did, I'd say is not null and put that in there. You know what? I think I will. I'll make that required. In other words, when I go in there. Now, I don't think I did this in the tutorial itself, but I could do it here. Is not null. Oops, you must select a phone type. Again, remember, they're using a drop down here if they're doing this, so it's not like they enter it, they select it. So always think about those things. All right, and now I will go in and I will do the lookup for this. So just like I did it earlier on, uh, and I could, again, I could go into the view, uh, into the um, query design grid and do this or I could do it right here since it's just this little bit right here but remember it's going to be a little bit different now this is actually the table name TLK and the true table name right now because I'm making a copy basically is contact star contact star phone star type new I would actually have to type that out here if I if I wanted to use that one I just built okay uh, if I'm just I'm going to use the one that's already there I'll tell you it, it works just as well so I'm going to go here and do in that way I also, I also know I have values or uh, data values in there I'll make it contact star phone star Oh, that yeah. Start contact star phone star type, and don't forget if you use parentheses in the name, you have to use them here too. It takes everything very literally, okay? And we've got that. And again, I and I obviously should have made a lookup form. I already, in fact, I already do have one built for you in here. Uh, so I'm going to just take that right now. So if I look up here, I got contact phone type, type. Pretend I built that, okay? I'm just showing you how I would, I could do a, a lookup field like I did in a category, with a category relationship on a subject table. Now that's done, and I probably move it where I want it to be. And then I want another field that is a yes, no field. And again, I'm going to name it contact star phone dash is active question mark I always put a question mark on it at the end of yes no field helps me know that another, yet another way to know it's a yes no field and I'm just going to say yes no call it um, phone is active something like that all right and 
Or I could just say active. I didn't have to say phone is active. I could just say active. That would work just as good. So we're already talking about the phone. Either way, that I wouldn't worry about too much. And we got that. So now I've pretty much got that supplement table built. If I looked at that right now, you would see I could put a pick a contact. I could put a phone in for them. That's our number. And then the phone type, and I click on that. And again, this is bound to when they, the one that I already had built, okay, the uh, TLK phone type, okay. It's not bound to this one. So that's why you're seeing values. That one has values. This one doesn't right now. Okay, so I could pick the type of phone it is, and I could say whether it's active or not, and then put another record in. And again, I could have multiple records then, all right? But we still really have not established the relationship fully here yet. Okay, so let's do that now. So I'm going to close down this table. And I'm going to close down this table. And I want to go through my notes just to make sure I haven't missed anything else because I'm about to do a, an important step of this whole thing. Now, looks, oh, yes, I did actually. Let me go back. I want to go back to um, uh, the contact. Uh, uh, yeah, to the to the uh, supplemental table. I'm sorry about this. I'm gonna go up here, open it up in Design View, because the one thing I didn't check was the alternate key to make sure it was really set. So I'm gonna go to Indexes now, and you'll see up here that I've got them in here. Now, it looks like it's a template, but it actually does have the real fields, and you'll see it actually has the names that I gave to them. It knows that. If you didn't set this, I wouldn't get too out of shape, okay? But I think it is really good practice to go in here and give it the, the right name. So we're going to call it Contact Star Phone um, Dash, I'm sorry, Phone Dash, and the supplement is, is Phone. And then on this one, it's just, oh, I'm sorry. It should, I don't have to give it the field name. I'm sorry. It's just this, okay? And it's the same thing on the next one. It's basically saying that's the alternate key for that table, and this is the primary key for this table. Again, I've mentioned this several times. that If you want to, you could just type alternate key. I wouldn't take off points for doing that. You could type, type primary key. If that helps you remember better, feel free, okay? That's not a critical naming convention. But if you wanted to have it like I did, you could set it back. Anyway, I'm just going to leave it like that. And again, notice these were both required fields, right? But, and of course, this is indexed to be unique values. This is indexed to be unique and that's primary. But if I go on those particular fields in the alternate key here, you'll notice they're not indexed, and you really shouldn't, okay? I noticed a lot of you have gone in and doing, on all fields, doing an indexed duplicates okay. While that works pretty well on small databases, when your database gets bigger, it's going to slow it down, okay? I would not do that. What indexing with duplicates okay does is if there's a field that you search on a lot, okay, you know, maybe you build a query to sort on that field or whatever else, it could speed up the, the uh, sort, okay? Sorts will get slowed down uh, if databases, once database, da databases get a lot of data. In this class, it's highly unusual for us ever to have that situation. That's why I don't, I don't recommend doing this, you know, in access, one one index on a on a table probably won't slow you down too much. Two indexes could. When you start having many indexes, I guarantee you, you don't even need to have a lot of data. It will just slow you down. All right. So I tend not to use indexing 
uh, on these. But it is very valuable if you if you are doing a query where you need to do a sort and you know and data is being updated constantly and needs to be resorted. It basically does sorts on the fly for you, and so that when you do a query, it just is automatically pointing to the things in the order that you need them to have in. All right. Uh, but anyway, I don't recommend ever using this index uh, on other fields other than if it was a obviously if it was a single field alternate key you want it to be indexed uh, but you want it no duplicates okay so the only time you ever, should ever see anything indexed are the ones that need to be no duplicates and that would be the primary key field which happens automatically yeah you can't even change it well it's there i don't think you can i you could try but i don't think it would do anything um and then of course any single field alternate key we have two fields in our alternate key so both of those are not indexed but the key itself is and you know it is by this unique here <coughs> excuse me so we're good on on our on our supplemental table now now we want to actually establish the relationship now those two that new ones that i just created i'm not going to use them i'm going to use the ones that are that i've already built for you okay so i'm actually going to delete those so it doesn't confuse you anymore I'm just deleting the stuff i already i just built okay because it's already there the contact phone is already there this this is the if you look at it it looks exactly like like what i had before all right and if i go in on uh the foreign key field that's in the supplemental relationship you'll see the lookup is set for you correctly and if you go into the foreign key field that from the category uh table that's that's categorizing the records you'll see that one's all set for you and, and it even has its bound to the form the lookup form that exists for you all right and again looking at its indexes you'll see that it's got a the two fields in the alternate key and it'll have its primary key field so that's all set to go and i had the lookup done for you too the uh tlk uh phones type and of course the the lookup form for that so now all we really need to do is set the relationship the supplemental relationship so i go up to database tools and i open up the relationship window and you'll see i've already set the relationships for all the categories here and you've got some other subject tables in here that i've built for you but here's the, the phone the contact phone that i built all right and what i want is i want the contact phone to receive the value of the contact so what i want to do is i want to highlight the primary key field from the contact and then left click hold it down drag it down here to this one that says long contact dash record identifier our foreign key field for that relationship and if it worked out right you should see that you've got the aught record identifier and then you have that lawn as my uh in my contact phone uh supplemental table okay i got the right i'm receiving that record identifier now enforce referential integrity just like we did with the category relationship always cascade update but here you go remember on category no matter what we did we never turned cascade delete on because we never wanted to lose the subject record in if the category went away it wouldn't make sense it's important subject records are part of what we call our master data all categories do are are give it dimension all right we all we don't want to lose a contact simply because something that we had it bound to in a category goes away but a, does it make sense for a contact's phone to exist if the contact goes away no it doesn't so here's a case where we would put cascade delete on all right and that is going to be true for all supplemental relationships so now i do a create and i actually have that set so i'm going to save this right now and i'm going to show you what we just did i'm going to go over to um i'm sorry i'm going to go I'm not seeing oh I didn't know I'm gonna have the table open all right I want to open up the contact table right now first off let me close down this relationships window 
Okay, I'm going to open the contact table. You see information about Elizabeth Anderson, blah, 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 blah. But we have this thing about there's phones for her. We can't see that right now because all we're seeing is the record that exists in contact, in the, in the uh, uh, contacts table. But I already I established a relationship, and believe it or not, I can actually see the related records for Elizabeth Anderson from here. And the way I do that is I go to this thing that says more. If you, if you already have, if for some reason you should have pluses here on the side, you already have this set, okay? You shouldn't, because I want you to be able to do this so you know how to do it, all right? Go to More, and then do Sub Data Sheet. Click that Yes, like that. Open that up, and then find the Sub Data Sheet you want to do. And what we want is we want to do uh, Contact Phone. So I had to scroll down because it was off the thing, but here's Contact Phone. That's what I want to do. And you know what? It even knows what it wants to link on. It's going to link from what's called the master field. The master is the subject. It's the one who sent the record. Okay, we, they call that the master table sometimes. The master field that's sending information to the child field, which is the field, the, which is the foreign key that's in the supplement table. All right? So we're sending this value to the supplement table and it's being stored on that field right here, this foreign key field that's over on the supplement table. I'm going to say, okay, if that didn't show that, you need to pick the, make sure it picks the right field. But you see what happened here? Just put these pluses here. I could hit one of these pluses and now it not only shows me Elizabeth Anderson's record, but it also shows me all the supplements in the phone supplement table, all the supplemental records that are in the phone that belonged to Elizabeth Anderson. And again, I entered this information already. I could add a new one right now. I could go in here and type in, uh, and by the way, I, didn't, I did not use a, uh, a uh, input mask for my phone over in this one, so I'm gonna have to type in the characters. 316, again, let's say it's 555-555. And I five, and I don't think I made this a required field either. So, but I, I did when I did the when I did my second one. So, but just pick one there, and if it's active, I could say that. I could maybe have two active or three active, whatever. I could put notes on here. Uh, usually, you should call her cell phone. Or something like that you know if you have something to attach you can if you've got data revisions as you go along you can do it so this is cool this is data in one table this is data in another table and you can manage them together that is pretty slick i really love how microsoft did this data sheet view now the problem is you can only do one relationship at a time if the supplemental table actually was then a one to many to some other table. It could have its pluses on it too. You could have actually have several levels of this, okay? But if you had two at the same level, you can only look at one at a time, all right? So how would I undo that? Maybe, and again, when you're going, on one of the extra credit assignments here, you're going to be asked to build one for links. You'll want to look at the links. You've already got this bound to phones. How would you go and bound it to links? Well, it turns out all you have to do is go back to more and under sub data sheets. Uh, actually, I think I have to close this down to do this. Yeah, okay. I think I do that and then sub data sheets and I do a remove. And now you notice those pluses went away. And then I would just go and do it again. Sub data sheet and then find the one for links. Now, I don't have that built, obviously, right now. If I did, I would go and pick it, and then just, okay, and then it's there, and I'd be able to go in here and see it. Now, each one of these has one, obviously. You could go and do it. Some of these, for instance, I just got one phone for. That's fine. He's got three. She's got one. I didn't have to have any. I could add bling. Maybe I don't know their phone yet. See, Stanley Nuremberger. I don't know his phone right now. Let's go in here and create a whole new master record. Okay, and I'm going to do it here from the data sheet. I'm not going to do it from the form. But I just want to show you what, what we did in setting the referential integrity. So I'm going to go in and add a new name.
Okay, Samuel P. Test Guy. Okay. And I'll give him a name. I know it's required. I really don't need this, but uh, let's do it. Uh, Mr. Sam Test Guy. Uh, none of these are required. I really don't need to add anything. I'm just going to show that you can. Online friend. These are all these are category relationships. I'm going to talk to you about gender in a little while. Affiliation. Wow, I got a lot of category relationships here, and you'll see that a lot. You know, sometimes you'll have a lot of those. All right. So now I've got him. I'm going to hit his drop down, and I'm going to put a phone in for him. Give him a type. Active. Yeah, fine. Okay. I'm going to put another one in there just for the heck of it. 316-888-888. Let's make that uh, his personal. So something like that. It's active. You know, some people might say, why would you care about if a phone's active or inactive? Well, you know, I might have records where at one time they were date stamped, and I want to know where, what phone I was using at that time. And it's up to you. You know, you don't necessarily have to have this field here. But anyway, I've got that done. All right. And I could close it up and go on my merry way now. Go and do things. Come back and see. I still can manage it. Now, if I wanted to, oh, I really didn't want to put this phone number in here. I could just go in here highlight it, right click, and do a delete record. And it's going to ask, it always asks me to confirm, do you really want to do it? Yeah, it's going to go away. No problem, because it's in the receiver of the relationship. But what about the sender? What if I try to remove the record for Samuel Test Guy? Well, again, if I had that cascade delete off, it wouldn't let me do it. But I have it on right now. So right now, if I go in here and I do... A delete record it's going to say a relationship that specifies a cascading delete are about to cause one record in this table along with related records in the related table to be deleted do I want to do that if I do yes right now he's gone all right and so is that other phone record so you already see there's nothing here right if I go over yeah, I want to say the layout. If I go over now to TSP phone and I open it up by itself, you'll see I have no phone for Mr. Test Guy anymore. All right? Because he doesn't exist anymore. I hit the drop down here, you'll see he doesn't exist. So not only did he get rid of the Test Guy, it also got rid of his phone. That's what referential integrity just did for us. Uh, it allowed us to do cascade updates and cascade deletes. I could have changed the name of one of these people, and it would change on all the records in phone. Uh, let's go back and do that. Let's go back in just for fun. I'm going to change one of the names of of the people in here. So I'm going to make uh, uh, Kate Beckinsale. Well, I like Kate Beckinsale. I mean, maybe, I, maybe I misspelled his name. It's, it's Roland Wackers. So I'm going to put an S on it now, right? Now, when I go over... And I save, first off, I save it. First off, is Roland Wackers saved? Is the value Roland Wackers being saved on that table? You see it, but what it really is saving is this primary key value, right? So all I am seeing, basically, when I open up this one right here, and I hit that drop, and there's Roland Wackers. See how he updated? Drop down, he's in there, updated, okay? What I really did is not change the primary key value that was linked there. I changed the alias to it. In other words, we use the alternate key to be an alias. Remember that? I got a zero length first field uh, from my query, and the second one will be then will act as an alias, and we usually make that the alter an alternate key or some combination of the fields that make up the alternate key. There you go. There it is. So that's how you do a supplement. I know I explained a lot more and, and went into a lot more detail than I do in the tutorial video. 
Uh, however, if you read the, the lesson, a lot of what I talked about is in there. It's also at the end in the in the five T section of it. Uh, but I wanted to give you a, a lot more detail on this because it turns out almost all our relationships are going to work something like this, but they all have their little uh, differences. Okay, and in fact, there is actually a lot of relationships among the different relationships. So, uh, getting used to doing this one. This is. Probably the second most one that I end up doing is a uh, is a supplemental uh, relationship, but they're not. It's not the most. The most is the junction relationship, which will be the subject of the next tutorial. Before I go there, though, something I mentioned is I want to go to back to contact table. I'm going to open it up in design view, and you're going to see I had a whole bunch of. Um, foreign key fields for the categories that could categorize the records in this table. And if you remember, I go back there, you saw those. You saw a type, relationship, and affiliation. But you probably also noticed that I had a drop down for gender, and gender is not in a relationship. How is that happening? Well, I'm going to show you. First off, it's just a simple field. A simple text field, a short text field. It could have been any kind of field, truthfully, okay? But usually it's a text field, all right? Gender. And it's just set up like any other text field, except it does have a lookup on it. And in that lookup, we have a list box and what's called a value list, okay? When you looked at, when, I, when we set up our category relationships, this was always a table query. Here it's a value list. And I can actually type in what values I want in the rows of that drop down then. So female, male. All right. And again, the rest of it works pretty much the same. You don't have a form for it, obviously. You don't need to manage it. But this is it. All right. And that will now some of you might think, if I could do it that easy, why am I using a lookup? Number one, because there is absolutely no referential integrity if you do it this way. All right. All it does is lets you pick something. If later on I decided to change male to man, I would have to go in all the records and change male to man. All right? There's no cascade delete capability. There's none of that stuff is available here, okay? This is not a substitute for a category relationship. That's why if you use it, I don't give you credit for it as a category relationship. Number one, because it's too damn easy, okay? But also because it's also not really a relationship. Also on this, it is very, very rare for lookup fields to stay s stable for long, long, forever, okay? If you suddenly had a third gender, which is happening in the world, you would have to go back in here and add it. All right. Now, that might not sound too big of a deal for something that you're managing, but what if somebody else is managing this and doesn't understand access too well? All right. You gave them forms in lookup fields where they could, do, where you're holding their hands through doing data management. But if they don't know access, they won't. They'll come in here and they'll start messing around with the design and really mess it up. Also, you may have delivered this in compiled format, and then the and users don't have the ability to change it unless you let it, okay? And this one you can't let them do if it's compiled. So I would typically only use this on extremely short lists where there is no doubt that those values will stay those values and they're fine in my database for pretty much forever, all right? So even though gender's here, you know, gender's one that probably I would say, okay, I could see where you would want to use. We sometimes call this a pick list, okay? But value list is it's really, it's it's true phrase. phrase. You want to, using a value list, I would let it happen. I would allow it for gender, but again, you wouldn't get credit for it being a category re relationship, all right? I, if I ask you to do a category relationship, you're going to do a category relationship. And believe me, I will know the difference just from looking at it, whether you did one or not. Of course, I'll absolutely know it when I look at your uh, re relational 
diagram, your relationship diagram, and realize that it's not in the model, then I know you didn't have a category relationship. And I'll notice that there's not a lookup table or a lookup form and all that stuff, okay? So don't try to sneak one past us, okay? The other thing you could use this for, a value list. I've told you before, I am not a big fan of the yes, no. Simply because you don't know whether somebody picks something or uh, unpicks something or if it's null. Now, there is a third state we saw where you could have a gray over if it's null. But once you've picked something in a yes, no, to get it back to null, you actually have to do that through a macro that deletes the value. You can't delete it yourself. At least I haven't figured out a way to do it. All right. On this, though, there is a way. I think you could do a control Z after the thing's been picked, and it will unpick the field, okay? It will unpick the value. So if you wanted to have, um, instead of a yes-no field, a text field that said um, U.S. citizenship, and then the value is yes, the values in the, in the value list are yes and no, that's fine. In fact, you might be able to put yes, no, and unknown, and that would be fine, all right? But again, I would really want you, and I usually always use category relationships, even on the small stuff, just because I never know what's going to happen down the road. So I'm glad I, I had an extra, some extra time here to do this. I couldn't, wouldn't have been able to tell you much about that uh, with the time constraints that we have in, in the class. So, But that's a nice little aside in building these that you're kind of learning now some of the nice uh, tricks, if you will, about building a real uh, stable and, and, and nice uh, database. So this was the supplement relationship. The next one we'll look at is the junction relationship.